Hi guys, it is Dr. Ndidi Ehim. Welcome to my channel. And today we are gonna be talking about PCOS and fertility, how it impacts your ability to be able to conceive and have a baby. So if you don't know me, again, my name is Dr. Ndidi Ehim. I am a certified functional medicine practitioner and a licensed pharmacist here in Texas. And I am very interested in women's health when it comes to polycystic ovary syndrome. So stay tuned if you wanna learn about how you can help with fertility issues you're having when you have been diagnosed with PCOS. Or even if you've not been diagnosed, but the symptoms kind of relate to you, these are some points that might help you. Okay, so in case you don't know, PCOS is polycystic ovary syndrome, and that affects two out of every 10 women. And it could look anywhere like miscarriages, infertility, irregular periods, problems having a regular menstrual cycle, or if you do have one, then you're having excessive bleeding, excruciating pain, a lot of cystic acne, facial hair, hair on your chest, you know, places you don't want, depression, and anxiety. Some people experience weight gain their blood sugar is always high because they have insulin resistance so these are just some of the things that come along with PCOS now what we're going to be focusing here today is fertility so PCOS affects fertility for women because you have more of the androgens than estrogen and androgen is producing more of the male hormones which is testosterone right and so with that it could be hard for you to conceive even if you get pregnant it might end up leading to miscarriage so there are some treatment options that your doctor might let you try like clomiphene or letrozole or some people go all the way to IVF which could be a little bit expensive in regards to like the care before and afterwards getting the medication so people end up going to different countries you don't know how safe that is so those are some of the things that are out there now some lifestyle things that you could change on your own could be dieting exercising and stress management now I'm gonna sit on this for a little bit because I really want you to understand what it is that you need to do when it comes to you know those three things I mentioned now when it comes to your diet it goes without saying eat healthy eat clean make sure you're avoiding things that spike up your sugar especially you know when it comes to potatoes white potatoes things Things like that it has a very high glycemic index meaning anytime you eat it your sugar levels go extremely high you might also want to avoid sugary drinks because if your insulin is not working you're just promoting a whole lot of glucose into your body that your body is not able to break down and take to different places where it's needed and also eat even if you're eating clean like fruits and vegetables make sure it's very high in antioxidants so eat all the colors of the rainbows the reds the blues the orange the red the yellow because those are the things that when you do eat them they go in there to fight any kind of radicals any kind of bad things that you already have going on in there so you could increase the possibility of you removing the toxins from your body so you could promote a healthy environment for pregnancy and for your pregnancy to stay now one thing i also want to mention is detoxing make sure you look into detoxing and detox the proper way look for a nice detox that goes into all stages of elimination in the liver exercising there are some exercises that increase the production of more testosterone especially for women who are already suffering from pcos so don't encourage anybody exercising for more than 30 minutes because your body starts to go into starvation mode and it's holding on to everything instead of releasing them and there are studies that have been done about that go ahead and do your own research okay the third thing is stress stress also produces stress hormones which support the production of androgens if you're already dealing with hormonal issues and it's preventing you from getting pregnant you definitely don't want to do a whole lot of stressing so short-term stress is okay like something is going on right now you're trying to run somewhere because you're late or whatever but when it's consistent long-term stress the same thing that's bothering you over and over again your career your job money children parents health those are the things that you really have to pay attention to because unbeknownst to you, your body keeps producing hormones to support the stress and we don't want that. So keep that in mind. Now, because I'm a functional medicine practitioner, first I always look for the root cause and then give you uh, natural solutions to support those problems to reverse it once and for all so i'm gonna now talk about supplements that you can use with all, everything else i've already discussed so don't just depend on supplements alone everything else i've discussed including these could help improve 
your situation in regards to fertility. So for people who are more of a holistic, I'm going the natural method, then you're really gonna enjoy all of these that I've said so far. Inositol. Inositol has been shown to really have great benefits when it comes to helping women with PCOS. It can help you sensitize your insulin so it could be more sensitive to the glucose when you eat it and it could take it wherever it is in your body and also it could help regulate your menstrual cycle so i talk to women all the time who say their periods they haven't had a period in one year two years five years right and so they can predict when they're ovulating they can predict when they expect to get pregnant and those are pretty dangerous if you ask me especially when you're trying to get pregnant you need to know you need to be able to track those things you need to be able to predict okay this is the time for me to try and also has also been shown to help ovarian function one thing with pcos is you have cysts on your ovaries which is an expression of inflammation so that's one of the things where you have to make sure that you're reducing inflammation so that's when i when i said eat foods that are high in antioxidants that's where those come in because they go in and fight inflammation in your body Another thing that has been shown to be very effective when it comes to fertility is NAC, which is also known as NAC or N-acetylcysteine. This antioxidant has a positive impact in fertility because it also helps to reduce the insulin resistance and improve ovulation and also lower your androgen levels. So remember what I said about androgens? Androgens support the production of testosterone. So when you're reducing that, you're allowing your body to be more open to have the hormonal balance and get pregnant easily now let's talk about omega-3 fatty acids now there are two kinds of omega fatty acids people talk about omega-3 omega-6 you want both of them to be balanced if you have to go with one omega-3 is more important omega-6 you will find in more like processed foods things that have been deep fried chips and you know things that have just been refined omega-3 is more natural where you could find it in fish certain plants like flax seeds and you could also find omega-3s i believe in avocado now studies have shown that taking omega-3 supplement may help you improve your menstrual regularity and also reduce your androgen levels so you can see here when it comes to like fertility we're trying to reduce androgen levels and we're also trying to increase the menstrual regularity um, vitamin d has also been shown to be very effective when it comes here women who have pcos it has been studied that they also have low vitamin d levels so it, it's very important in your overall health especially when you're looking at okay i'm trying to get pregnant what do i need to do or what kind of um supplements or things do i need to take include vitamin d into that it helps with hormonal balance so it helps to increase insulin sensitivity next let's talk about folate with it which is folic acid uh, if you're a woman you probably heard this a lot take folic acid if you're trying to get pregnant so i'm gonna cover it here women who are trying to conceive it is very crucial for your fetal development that you're taking folic acid it's something i would advise that you when you're trying to get pregnant you're planning a pregnancy make sure you get enough folate either you're getting it in your diet if you're taking a supplement this is important for your baby especially when it comes to the formation of your baby's spine the brain and spine axis it's very important that they have enough folic acid acid in there to support the baby cinnamon cinnamon <laughs> people are like cinnamon what <laughs> so studies have shown that cinnamon supplementation has helped improve women's menstrual cycle it helps it become more regular it also helps insulin sensitivity again ding 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 so it goes without saying that infertility must be linked with what goes on in your body in regards to blood sugar and insulin and so we need to make sure that we understand that connection and we'll also always bring it down that's why at the top of this conversation i said avoid the sugars avoid the sugar drinks avoid the sugars anywhere you can i have videos that also talk about different kinds of foods you could use for sugar instead 
Now, let's talk about chromium. Chromium is a mineral that may kind of help you improve insulin and sensitivity. And also, when you improve insulin sensitivity, it balances your hormones again. And also, it helps to improve your ovary function. So that's something that you want when you're trying to get pregnant. And we need to really get the sugar down because insulin needs to work so you can get pregnant, right? Okay, last thing, adaptogenic herbs people don't really look at herbs as something you need when you're trying to get pregnant especially because the doctor's advising you be careful no herbs but when you're trying to get pregnant we need to activate certain things in our body to be able to accept the pregnancy or, or you know whatever kind of biology is happening in our bodies right so ashwagandha if you know it's very popular these days everybody's talking about ashwagandha because it has so many benefits but also there's one called rod Rhodiola, R-H-O-D-I-O-L-A. It may help with stress management, the both of them. And that's, I think, one of the things that a lot of people, you know, kind of gravitate to ashwagandha for because it helps reduce the stress level. And remember, again, I told you stress produces those hormones that are supporting more androgens and we don't want that so we need to reduce the stress levels and this could be very beneficial in people who suffer from chronic stress so if chronic stress is your problem it's impacting your hormonal balance and your ability to get pregnant your fertility or even keep your baby all the way to term so it's important that you remember that supplement is not a replacement for a healthy diet or regular exercising or any kind of medical treatments that your doctor or your healthcare provider has advised you so whenever you're trying to start any kind of different regimen especially when it comes to supplement you need to clear from your doctor especially if you have other disease states going on before you begin any of these so i hope all of these help if you have any questions or if you've tried any of this that allowed you to get pregnant please put it down below so you could encourage other women out there who are suffering with pcos and are having a hard time getting pregnant share your story with me i would really love to read them and if any of these help please go ahead and subscribe this is a way for you to know that i'm giving important information to women who need this so they can manage and reverse their pcos once and for all again this is dr ndd thank you and see you next time take care bye bye